In tonight's Kettle Land News investigation, Angela Kennecke follows the trail of the Bumble Bandit. These days, finding the love of your life, or at least a date for a Saturday night, is as simple as swiping left or right on an app like Tinder or Bumble. Sarah, who asked that we don't identify her, decided to try online dating after getting out of a long-term relationship. Tinder is more of like a hookup app where Bumble is more people who are looking for a relationship. Sarah matched with this man on Bumble, Matthew Steven Nelson. He's a good looking guy. He was very good with his words. So tell me, did you swipe right? Yeah. The two hit it off and Sarah, who was working as a wedding photographer, invited Nelson to help with the shoot. He was so helpful. He was so helpful. It was amazing. He charmed everybody that was there, you know, complimented me the whole time, how great I was at my job. It was, you know, who doesn't want to hear that? Sarah says Nelson almost seemed too good to be true. We talked a lot. Um, he came over quite a bit. All my friends loved him. There was no question in anybody's mind, you know, the, who he was, who he presented himself as, is exactly who we thought he was. Nelson told her he was a construction manager for his dad's company. He would be telling me, you know, this is the duty that I'm doing today. I'm welding today. I'm in the heat today. But then, like, when I saw him at the end of the day, he was all sweaty. And he was, you know, looked like he had been doing construction. One evening, just before they were about to head out on a date, Sarah opened her camera bag. And all of the stuff was gone. All of it was gone. Matt is there and I am freaking out. He comes to me and says, well, I just checked the back door. There's a whole bunch of marks on it. I think somebody broke in. Sarah called the police and the officer asked if she thought Nelson took the equipment. I was like, no, there's no way that it could be him. I made the mistake of pointing out things that were of value that had not been stolen. To him? To him, yep. When I knew it was him is when I returned home later that week and the rest of my stuff was missing. That stuff included cash and this ring that Sarah says is worth $4,000. It was my first experience with online dating. Immediately after dating Sarah, Nelson moved on, meeting another woman, this time through Tinder. She asked that we not show her face. Yeah. We're calling her he Ashley. Was. He was super dreamy, he was super attractive, so sweet so kind he you know would say all these things he had going for him he was always available if i ever needed anything yeah. ashley showed us these videos of nelson playing with her child as a single mom ashley worked several jobs including as a waitress shortly after meeting nelson cash she had in tips vanished but she chalked it up to construction workers who'd been in her home matt didn't look like a bad guy he didn't fit the narrative of someone who's going to go into your house and steal from you. Then she got a phone call from Nelson's father. His dad pretty much just told me the truth about him entirely. And he said, you know, go check all your valuables because Matt probably stole more than you think he did. And the only real thing I had of significant value was my wedding ring. As you may have guessed, the ring worth thousands of dollars was gone. Matt took my wedding ring, took it to a pawn shop, and pawned it for $200. Nelson's father bought it back and returned it to Ashley. Kevlevan Investigates contacted Matt's father about the incident, but he declined to be interviewed. However, Sarah paid him a visit after Matt stole from her and recorded the following conversation with Matt's dad on her phone. Matt's a smart kid, good looking kid. He told Sarah how their entire family had been victimized by his son. He's done it to me, his grandparents, his mother. I mean, he flat out just, you would, there's no reason not to believe him, right? Right. When he was talking to you. Yeah. He told her they'd put Matt in treatment for a gambling addiction, but it hadn't stopped Matt from continuing to commit crimes. We probably spent forty, fifty thousand dollars trying to bail him out, help him out, mm -hmm. but he can't help himself. Sarah learned the truth during that conversation. He lied and you know said that he was a manager of his dad's construction company, and he wasn't. He was unemployed. He told me that he was living in an apartment close to where I lived, which I had picked him up from before. Uh, to find out that he actually didn't live there. 
um, and was homeless and living out of his car. Prosecutors charge Matt Nelson with grand theft and for being a habitual offender in the case of stealing Sarah's camera equipment. Then Nelson disappeared for nearly two years. Ashley says she's living proof of that, but she never reported the theft to police because she got her ring back. Did it affect your ability to trust other people? Were you hurt by this? I mean, what did it do to you? It changed my perspective on, on dating and trusting people. You know, you can be whoever you want to be on the internet. Meanwhile, Kevillan investigates dug into Nelson's criminal background dating back to 2007. He has theft and fraud convictions in Iowa and Minnesota. He was also convicted in Clay County of a check forgery scheme in 2015. Nelson's father told Sarah what happened during their conversation. He stole his brother's car, he stole his brother's identity, took his ID, passport, or ID, and racked up probably thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars worth of loans, wrote checks on his account, stole all the money out of his account. For those charges, a judge sentenced Nelson to five years in prison and ordered him to pay back nearly nine thousand dollars. To date, he hasn't paid a dime. But that's not all. In addition to the charges for stealing Sarah's photography equipment, Nelson faces even more grand theft charges, accused of stealing his father's company credit card and brother's identity in 2019 to buy tools in Sioux Falls and then pawn them. How bad do we feel? Give and give and give and then he steals from us and steals from us. And After two years on the run, Nelson was found in the Omaha area and pleaded guilty to stealing Sarah's cameras. Lincoln County State's Attorney Tom Woolman prosecuted the case. People don't come with warning labels on them. And uh, you find that especially in uh, individuals with sociopathic uh, character traits. And I'm not here to say that Matthew Nelson is a sociopath, um, but uh, our sociopaths uh, hold themselves out as individuals who are very charming, gregarious, uh, super friendly, say all the right things, do all the right things, uh, and then ultimately what you find is that it's just a house of cards. The judge sentenced Nelson to four years in prison and ordered him to pay back more than $10,000 to Sarah. It's complete betrayal. Um, you know, you open yourself up and you open up to somebody with the intention of them loving you and caring about you and thinking that they have your best interest at heart and then to find out that they were actually using you, there's no words, I guess, to describe that. And definitely be more cautious with like online dating, especially because it, it's the internet. Matt wasn't anything like he said he was. But he said the same thing to how many different women? And we all believed it. Nelson is scheduled for a jury trial for the latest grand theft charges in June. He is currently serving his prison sentence for taking Sarah's equipment, but could be released within a couple of years. We asked to speak to him for this story through his attorney, but never received a response.